Chapter 20 is our final chapter of the semester where we have an intro to organic chemistry. For some of you, this will set the stage for what you're getting into next year. For the rest of you that are done with chemistry after this semester, it'll be just a taste of what you're missing out on. So let's see what this chapter looks like overall. Okay. 20.1 hydrocarbons. We'll actually spend two videos talking about that because there are a lot of important in concepts that are introduced there in 20.1. And then we'll lump the last three, 20.234, all together in the final video. Now, in the textbook, this is kind of a lengthy chapter. And if you look at the slides, it seems long as well. But there are lots of examples. And I'll just be highlighting key ideas and pointing them out that you should know as we go through. So the first logical question is, what is organic chemistry? It was originally defined when this branch first came to be known as the chemistry of living things, which was different than synthetic chemistry, where things were made in the lab. Okay, but that distinction no longer holds. Okay? It actually blurred the lines with urea when that was first made in the lab, right? You know urea is found in the body, and then when that was made in the lab, we realized that those things couldn't be separated out as easily. So the distinction no longer holds there. Organics now considered to be the study of carbon-containing molecules, okay? due to the unique properties of carbon, namely the fact that it shares electrons and shares them well, forming covalent bonds. Okay? And now, right, where organic was originally different than synthetic chemistry, now organic really is all about the synthesis of complex molecules. Right? There are careers in synthetic organic chemistry. So let's get into the world of hydrocarbons. Okay? Hydrocarbon, it's right there in the name. Simplest organic molecules, they contain only carbon and hydrogens. Right? They're common in fuels, they're commonly used in plastics as well. And even though it seems basic, right, just carbon and hydrogen, how complex can it get? There are tons of possibilities because they can vary in length, right, the number of carbon atoms that they have. They can vary in how they branch. Is it all one straight chain or does it branch off a bunch of different ways? can vary in their degree of unsaturation, which has to do with double bonds, triple bonds, or rings, or any combination thereof, right? Something could be branched and have a double bond or a triple bond. Could be long, could be short. So there are a bunch of different classifications of hydrocarbons. The first one we're going to consider alkanes. You should know what alkane means. It's a saturated hydrocarbon, meaning that it only has single bonds throughout the entire molecule. So carbon, carbon, single bonds, carbon, hydrogen, single bonds, alkane. These things don't react a lot, right? You can combust them. They can react with heat or light in a radical mechanism, but they don't do a ton. Okay. All the carbons in here, because they have four bonds and they're covalently bonded, they're sp3 hybridized. Okay. And they're bonded to just either carbon or hydrogen. And as you've made your way through two semesters of chemistry, you've seen a bunch of different types of structures that are shown. Okay. We've used condensed structural formulas quite a bit this semester, but in the world of organic, we use something that's known as a skeletal structure. And maybe you've seen these before. Okay. These are the other types of structures that we have. Okay. Looking at methane, ethane, pentane. Right? We've got our Lewis structures that we have up top. Right, Those are old from Chem 1. We have ball and stick models that are good for showing things like molecular uh, geometry and space filling models that are good for showing relative size and things like electron heat map. Okay? And remember that, right, we draw our Lewis structures straight like this, but there's never a 90 degree bond angle, right? Because everything's are sp3 hybridized, as I just mentioned, these things are tetrahedral. But in organic, the skeletal structures are useful for writing out reaction mechanisms, which is what organic is largely about, by right? showing how things react at the molecular scale. So when we do a skeletal structure, right, because so many things have carbon in the world of organic, we don't bother writing out the carbon symbol. Rather, carbon atoms are symbolized by either the end of a line or a bend in a line. So ends and bends are what you're looking at. And we know that carbon has to form four bonds. So we don't bother showing in hydrogen. We can right, use logic to figure out where it is. Okay. But if there's anything other than carbon and hydrogen, then those things get symbols. 
So let's see what that looks like. Okay. Here we have building a skeletal structure, starting with the expanded formula, then the condensed formula. Those you should be familiar with, that's old material. But then the skeletal structure is new. Okay. So notice all those ends of lines here, 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 there. Those all represent carbons as do all the bends. So when you're drawing these things, you need to make sure to emphasize the angle, right? You're not just gonna draw a curve, you need to emphasize the point because those represent carbons as well. Here, 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 there, there, all right? And if you add up together all those ends and bends, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it matches the nine carbons that we see in either the expanded or the condensed formula. And then we can use logic to figure out how many hydrogens each of these guys in the skeletal structure would need. If I take any of the ones at the end, they only have one bond already, the CC single bond. Okay. So to get a total of four bonds, they need to have three additional bonds. Okay. So that's how we get three hydrogens over here. Versus one of these two in the middle, they have two bonds going either way. Okay. So they would need two additional bonds, therefore they need two hydrogens. So in the next slides, we have some examples for you to practice. Pause the video as we go through these. Take these structures, pause it, try and draw the skeletal structure. And hopefully your answers matched up. We can also do that with rings as well. It's no different. So you can try these two. Again, pause the video, try and draw the skeletal structure and hopefully this is coming together well. We can also do it the other way, okay? Here you're given the skeletal structure, pause the video and try and draw the condensed structural formula where you show all the C's and H's. And you should have gotten this answer here. That is an important idea from organic. You should know how to, in this chapter as well, right? For the quiz and test, you should know how to draw skeletal structures. So now let's get into the world of isomers, right? We've introduced isomers. There are a bunch of different types of isomers that exist. Right? And because of that, because things can have the same number of atoms but bond differently, we can't determine the structure directly from the formula. Okay? But all alkanes have the general formula CN H2n plus 2. Okay? As long as there are no double bonds, triple bonds, or rings, that formula holds. Okay? So if you take something like butane that has four carbons, okay? the n is 4, 2n plus 2 is 10, you know the formula for butane is C4H10. But that doesn't tell you how it bonds. Okay? I could have butane in a straight line like this, or I could have an isomer that's named 2-methylpropane. Notice how one is branched over here, the other one's not. And that emphasizes the fact that we have to think about everything in three dimensions. Okay, don't worry about the nomenclature, we'll get to that in the next video. So here we have one last example to emphasize what you need to look out for when you're considering isomers. Because these look different, but they're actually all the same molecule. Okay? And the trick that I can use to determine that is I can start at any end and get to the other end without lifting up my finger or pointer or pencil, whatever you're using, right? Here I go one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Lastly, one, two, three, four. So they look different, but I have to think about them in three dimensions. Truly, these are all the same molecule. Whereas if I jump back here, right, I can't do that without doubling back on myself. So those are different isomers from one another. So know what alkanes are, know how to do skeletal structures, be familiar with isomerism, which we've discussed in the past. And then we'll continue with those ideas in the second video.